Hello, my name is Talona Barami Samuel, and I have decided to do this video, make this video to enable all of those who join our team in whatever business to be able to start off. So this is more like a new members orientation program to enable you walk your way through to financial freedom. My advice to you would be kindly take um, a jotter and also take um, a bio or pen to write down the things that you think are important to you as you watch this video. Also do note that you could pause this video at any point in time if you get tired and start again whenever you are ready. But please take whatever you're going to learn from this video very importantly. It is primarily designed for new members or partners. However, old partners can actually go through the video to refresh them or refresh their minds of what they've learned before and what they perhaps have not been implemented and how they can implement same in order to grow their business. So I say welcome to you their home business professional. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the Home Business Professionals team. Here we focus on making our lives better by using what we do every day. That's our lifestyle to make extra lucrative income. Now we also invest in various businesses as a team in order to diversify our portfolio to be able to withstand the bubbles and busts of economic twists and turns. We obviously can't run away from them, can we? And we love to live the golden lifestyle. Always remember, that for you to be able to achieve great things, it requires some small but consistent efforts. Now, if other people have hit the million mark in days or weeks after joining any of our businesses, you can also do the same. All you need to do is learn, learn, and learn again. Then act on what you have learned until you become a master of a business. But there are some basic things that you must learn to succeed in this business. Let me mention a few of them. And I must warn you, do not stop until you learn these things. First, you need to learn how to prospect people if you're interested in the network marketing part of our business. This means saying things that will get them interested in listening to whatever you have to offer. Now, how you need to invite, how you can invite people is another skill you need to learn. Respecting them, inviting them to our live expos and any of our programs is a critical skill every network marketing professional or home business professional must learn. The third, the very important skill you need to learn is how to present the business. You see, there is um, a common saying in this profession that goes thus, a fact tells story sell. So you must learn to present the facts and the truth of our business. It's more important to tell them in a story that your listeners can relate to it. Your heart must speak to theirs. The mind can never communicate with your heart. So you need to connect your story to the economic realities of our listeners. I want to also inform you that it's important for you to learn how the basic, how the back office works. And so you need to get onto the website, find out how the back office of our business works, and learn how the business in totality works so that you can explain this to others. You must also make the point of view to learn how to do multiple investments, to reinvest when you earn. So when you earn, that's not the time to throw a party and go and do some Thanksgiving and all of that. It's, it's, we're used to this part of the world. But it's time for you to reinvest. The most single part, the single most powerful principle of making money is what we refer to as compounding. So that's a skill, that's a, that's a principle, that's a, that's a system of doing business you must learn. Again, you need to learn how to build, manage, and mentor a team so that you can earn up to at least 10 million naira or more in a month. If you understand the seven fundamental points listed above, the sky will only be your beginning in this business. Let me mention to you some of the do's and don'ts. Let me start with the do's. You must learn aggressively. Within the first two days, you must learn as much as you can learn. Read posts, follow the charts, watch videos, read scripts. Learning is the simplest but most difficult thing in this profession of home business. Why? People go to school 
go to the university, spend seven years, ten years studying things like law, studying things like um, medicine, and all sorts. But when it, in order for them to work for someone else, but when it comes to this business, network marketing, or even home business, people fail to understand that they need to learn the basic skills in order to survive. So learning is key. You must stop, don't just jump in, get excited and start talking to people about your business. You probably will be telling them the wrong things. Number two, you must identify your success coach. Your success coach might be the person who recruited you or the person that you directly assigned to either left or right side, whichever. But your coach is that person that will work with you. So identify this person and work closely with the person. Now, both your successes are interwoven. If you succeed, your success coach succeeds. If you fail, it fails. So you must work together. Your success, but note that your success or failure in this business primarily rests on you as a person. So do not leave it to anybody. You must follow the team presentations at least once every day. If your team has presentations, make sure you follow through. Do not be far away. Be present at live expos and team events and activities. That way you would be able to build a team that is event oriented. You must make it a point of get you again to build your prospect list. Always have at least 10 new persons that you invite to events, live or virtual. Make it a target 10, but if you get five every day, that's fine. And make it a point of duty to invite people always to join business presentations. That is how you grow your business. You need to also set personal and business goals. Set realistic personal, financial, family, and business goals as it pertains to your business. Okay? For instance, I made my first, I made my first one million naira in two weeks. Write your goals as if you have already achieved them. I want to, um, I have a house, I built a house, a three bedroom flat, I built a duplex, I built a bungalow. In six months, I bought a brand new car. In six months, all these are things, targets you can put in place, goals, personal, realistic goals you can put in place to drive you. Now we've talked about the do's. What about the don'ts? Number one, do not sit back and expect others to do the work for you while you are. This negates the laws of natural justice and equity. Do to people what you want them to do to you. Don't go solo or silent when you face difficulties in your business. That's a sign of weakness. Share your challenges. Do not be afraid. We all face challenges. Number three, healthy competition is great, but never compare yourself to any other person. It could dampen your spirit. Number four, don't delete any group posts on the team without reading it. Do not say, I'm too busy, I don't read from the group. Well, that's entirely your problem because your business will die gradually. You need to connect with the team and stay connected. Don't ignore tasks and assignments from your success coach or any senior partner in the position of authority because these guys are out there to help you. Now that you have signed up, what next? Connect with your success coach. Get your login details from your success coach or your sponsor. Log into the relevant website and check the correctness of your details and learn how the back office works. Verify your accounts where applicable and do your KYC. KYC here means know your customer. You know, it's a protocol that's set up depending on the business you get involved in, in order for the business to be able to track its customers and partners. And don't forget where necessary, applicable, upload your photograph. Now, the moment you sign up, you become, you have equal rights with everybody in the eyes of the company. You can contact customer service directly to sort out any concerns. So don't just wait and keep asking primary or fundamental questions as you yourself can solve. One way you can learn how to solve these problems is by thoroughly studying the terms and conditions and go to the frequently asked questions. Go through them and study them. Now let's talk about the association. We are actually home business professionals. That means we believe that it is possible to make money wherever you find comfortable you call home. It could be your bedroom, it could be your sitting room, it could be anywhere. 
but you're not necessarily tied to a particular desk from nine to five. You have your time, you control, you manage your time. Now this team looks at businesses that are viable and what we do is to build systems that enable partners to benefit more and faster. The team has been part of various businesses and we refer to everyone as either a sponsor or a partner rather than upline to downline. The reason is that we see everyone as um, a support to the other. So no one is up, no one is down. Right? There's nothing wrong in the, in the, in the expressions of lines and downline. Right? That's uh, really wrong in our industry. However, we've chosen to say sponsor or partner. You know, we value everyone. You must sit back and ask yourself, what is the purpose of doing this business? You see, if your why is very strong and stronger than your how, that is the best way to go. But when your how is stronger than your why, it means you don't see a clear picture as to why you're going into this business. And then what happens? What happens is that sometimes you get choked, you get choked up. And sometimes you get tired. So you have to know why you're doing this. What do you want to achieve? Why are you working? Is it because you want a vacation, a family, you want a beautiful house, beautiful ride? Is it that you want financial freedom? You need to understand really why you're going into this business. That is what's going to drive you and keep you focused even when things go south. You see, in this business, skills separate professionals from amateurs. The three most important skills, like I mentioned earlier, you must understand is prospecting, inviting, and presenting. Success in network marketing isn't just about luck, not just about unfortunate or chance or timing. Some say get in quickly at the top fast. You know, that's not the point. It's more about skills. So where you're not gifted, you're not talented, you learn and you can get your skills to make up for that. So you must endeavor to educate yourself. Let me tell you that education is not about learning of fact, it's rather training of the mind to think and endure even when you face tough times. Lesson one you must understand when it comes to mindset is that, is, uh, you know, when it comes to mindset is that you need to ask yourself, how much money do I want to make? Ask yourself these questions. So how long can I wait? Timing. What does it take to achieve this? So you must have a clear vision plus your dates. You must have a clear goal plus steps to achieve them. You must have plans and a calendar to success. So you don't have to be great, but you need to start in order to be great. Now let's take a, let's look at the process of how you can prospect. The principle is simple, sort, don't convince. Some people say the problem is how to convince people. No, you don't convince people. First of all, you need to qualify your prospect. So how do you do that? You first of all create a rapport, you use icebreakers, you have your one minute presentation. This is our system that we use. You do a three way call or you invite the person to a private business reception. Okay, do a two on one, that's a private meeting or you invite the person to any of our meetings. Now the purpose of this process is to qualify the prospect because each step enables you to answer these questions. Is my prospect in need of an opportunity now? If yes, does he see a solution to his need in the opportunity that I offer? Okay, so talking about icebreakers, make it a point of duty as a principle never to do your presentations, to do presentations for people unless they ask for it. It's critical for you to understand that one basic skill everyone needs in this business is how to introduce your business to new people, whether it's friends, family, or even complete strangers. Most people feel awkward and uncomfortable when trying to approach people when they get started in this business. That's understandable. So how do you approach people for this business in a way that they get so curious that they ask you for a presentation? This training is about that very skill, specific things you can practice and say so that people will start asking you to see a presentation and if they don't, there will be absolutely zero rejection. We'll call them icebreakers. You don't want to talk to someone and the person says something and you feel discouraged or you feel like you've been, you've been rejected. Nobody likes to be rejected, but you meet lots of rejection in this business. So like we said, never do a presentation to people unless they ask for it. So let's see some of the icebreakers. 
Imagine you're meeting someone and you ask him, are you married to your job or are you open-minded? They could ignore you, but more likely they will be surprised. It's not an average thing to hear. Very, very, very few people are truly married to their job and almost nobody wants to admit that they are not open-minded. So when you say, are you married to your job? Why are you open-minded? People want to decide, don't want to side with the latter. And if they say they are open-minded, you could use the following lines. But when they say that, you could respond like this. I can't talk to you right now, you know, because you're working. But let me get your number and I'll give you a call. And we can get together when you have some time and I'll have my business partner and I explain more. Sometimes you could be in a bank, you're talking to a teller. One liner, and you break the person's attention. Let's see this other one. I just found out. Now, when you say, I just found out, the human mind is designed so that curiosity is triggered. And the person wants to know, yes, so what did you find out? And you, when you pause, just go on and say, a way we can get paid whenever people buy pure gold, or maybe people uh, sign up to a business, or maybe people buy coffee, or maybe people just um, key into cryptocurrency, or people, you know, say one thing, depending on the business, okay? And then you can say to the person, if you'd like me to show you how, if you'd like to know how, I would be glad to tell you. Meanwhile, pass me the piece. Pass me the piece could be anything. It could be, well, you know what, pass me, a bar, pass me a bottle of beer. Why are you doing that? You pick the person's attention, his curiosity is high, and then you go to something and the person naturally will feel like, whoa, you know what? What do you mean pass me the piece? Tell me what? Tell me some more. Two, this is just irresistible. The command takes control of the person's subconscious mind and they will demand you to tell them how. And even if they don't, were you rejected? No. So it's a win-win. You could even try it again another time with a different phrase. Let me say people. Uh, most people will say, oh, well, how does it work? Oh, really? Well, that sounds interesting. Tell me more. They've just asked you for more information. So what do you do? Or what do you say next? Sit tight, I'll tell you some more. Well, I'm just getting started, so I wouldn't be able to explain it very well. I'm working with uh, Mr. Stalin and Barry Samuel, and he's teaching me the skills. He's a very successful entrepreneur, and I need to be able to, you know, he's teaching me the skills that I'll be able to do same. Let's get together with him by phone or online, or at least, um, you know, a live talk, and he can answer all your questions. So you're now referring the person to perhaps your sponsor, you know, your, your coach, or help out. And now this is what to say if people ask for more clues after using the icebreaker. I could give you a complete presentation that it would take just one minute. When can you set aside one minute to hear it? Okay, so having said that, you've picked the person's interest, curiosity is triggered and it's very high. Now let's look at a one minute presentation. How do you give your presentation in just one minute? So the president asks for a clue, they directly want answers to these three questions. What's the nature of your business? What kind of money can I make? What do I have to do to make such money? This is the time to use the one minute presentation. Now imagine this one minute presentation where in the gangster business, you can earn an extra 10 million naira yearly from this. All you have to do is show me. Do you want to know more about this? Simple. This is the business we do. This is how much you're going to get. This is what you need to do to get that money yearly. Would you want to know more? I can give you details. I'm sure everybody's mind will trigger that. Whoa, <laughs> you know. Okay, at that point, it's a decision-making point because you're collecting decision. Okay, so you could actually say, we're in a pure gold business, we're in a cryptocurrency business, we're in a real estate business, we're in a recent discovery that's helping people buy, store, and sell pure 24 karat gold from the comfort of their home. Okay, you can earn an extra three to 10 million naira in your first year from this business. All you have to do is pay a small percentage for the gold bar you desire to buy and recommend this unique opportunity to those who might be interested in dealing in gold just as I just did. You want to know more about this. One minute and you said it, it's gold, right? It's cryptocurrency, if it's real estate, if it's anything. One minute you're saying, this is what the business is about. This is how much you'll get. This is what you need to do to get that. Would you like to know more about this? 
I think it's pretty simple, right? So what do you do after you get a yes? Ask for the hot button. Would you like to know first? Ask, demand for a yes or a no. At this point, your duty is just to listen to all the trust of what the prospect has to say and get him connected by three way to your business partner or leader for answers. If you notice, this is going step by step. He's respected, all right? You now you've asked the recently relevant questions and some using icebreakers, and then you've done your one minute presentation. You want to do a three way call, you know, it's a step by step thing. So you book a meeting using a three way call. Now let's talk about the three way call. Remember, we said never process a prospect alone. Never prospect a prospect alone. Never process a prospect alone, whichever way. Always make use of a third party. That's like authority. You see, the mathematics of prospecting is this trust, build trust with your prospect, make your prospect respect your partner, boom, good presentation happens. So, we said never prospect or process a prospect alone. So, how do you build respect? You need to decorate your partner using edification. Edify your partner. That's on the other side of the telephone. Edification is the act of speaking highly of someone and building up his or her credibility. Okay? When you give more respect to your sponsor or whoever you're talking to, or whoever you're using on the other end, you get more results. This is really critical. Let me share with you some edification tips, okay? Um, some of the tips you can use, all right? First, you talk to your prospect, tell your prospect how you actually met your sponsor, okay? And then um, what, your pro what your sponsor used to do his previous life before joining the company, uh, what he has achieved now, where he is heading to with the company, what was remarkable about the first business conversation you had with him, what you discovered about him, what you might want to emulate from him, why you like hearing from him and um, being around him, what other people say about him, what the company say about him. You know, by the time you see all these things, your prospect is like, whoa, I want to talk to this person. Okay, so how do you invite? You need to also learn how to invite effectively using three-way calls. So you edify and then your partner initiates the invitation. Your prospect makes a decision. You would remain completely silent. Okay, so the next thing I want to share with you is quickly, let's take a look at this um, before we go off and then I'm going to do a second part that I'm going to share with you how to process a prospect. The edification script that you can use, okay, you can, you can use this, okay, like this, um, you can say this, I'm working with some successful people right now who are making tons of money that most people make in a year. They're super humble, down to earth and they love helping people. They know 100% of the business and understand that time is money. I'd like to get you connected to one of those because I'm still in training right now and I don't want to mess things up if you understand that. So hold on a sec. Let me introduce Mr. Stallone or Barry Samuel on the other line. Beautiful. You can use this line, hook, line, and sinker. Okay? And so your business partner can go on to say, Hello, Mr. XYZ. I heard of your decision about... Uh, business, it could be food business, gold business, cryptocurrency business, real estate business. Uh, let's take it this way. On Tuesday by 12 p.m., I'll be having a private business reception at the Renaissance where a few people like you will be shown two things about our business. Firstly, you'll see how the business works 100%. And secondly, you'll be shown a blueprint on how to grow your business from that day to 1 million naira monthly, 10 million naira monthly, 100 million naira yearly within 90 days like others did without having to physically buy or sell products. Please note, all right, that it's just for the five minutes uh, business meeting and you don't want to miss out on this new way of making money. All right, so your, your, your success coach, of course, knows what to say, all right? So, so the next on the series that we're looking at is how you can process a cost, I mean, a, a prospect using the two-on-one or private business reception method, okay? So how can you do that? The way you can do that is get your business partner involved, get your prospect involved, and this is you. So you can have the meeting with your prospect, or you could also invite your partner, your business partner. You have a group, which is like a private group you have put together, and this is you. And in any way, in any case, this is, 
um, two on one. This is like you have a group that you can deal with. Now, when you come upon the business, when you come into the business, you do not, nobody expects you to do all the talking because you're still learning. So one of the resources you have is your sponsor, your coach. Conversely, what that means that you also need to be up and doing to learn because the people that would come onto the system, that would come into the system, would look up to you as their own coach. Now, when we follow this system that we've mentioned, you say it's duplicable and it's simple. That's how we achieve success collectively and individually. So like I said earlier, you don't have to be great to start, but really you need to be, you need to start. You have to start in order to be great. So the clock is ticking. So what do you do when you take a look at the clock? The clock doesn't stop. It keeps moving. So it keeps going. What do you do? Do you stop and look at the clock? You're looking at the clock. The clock is moving. As a network marketing professional or as a business professional, as a home business professional, you have one boss and that boss is your calendar. You're saying, hey, I fired my boss. No, you just fired your physical human boss. You need to make the calendar your boss. You need to have clearly what you want to do every day. Why? Knowing what to do is not enough. You must do what you know. To so the three basic components of a business calendar, you must select any five days in a week. You look at maybe two, three hours per business day, and then you look at what are the money-making activities. When you're able to identify your money-making activities, you restrict the things you do, use your time effectively. You need to look at how you can rest, maybe also exercise, Look at when you need to give customer feedback, team building and training in order to grow your team. Look at when you're supposed to have three-way calls, personal development, read books, listen to audios, watch videos, and time you need to prospect, start collecting contacts and booking appointments. These are very critical things you need to do as a home business professional. Otherwise, you will die in illusion that you do not have a boss. You are your own boss and then you get like a death call or you get lethargic, you relax, and your business will crumble. See, there's a difference between doing a lot and doing enough. This is a sample of a business, a good, good weekly business calendar. You have time to collect new prospects, your three-way calls, uh, team building, and all of that. So you could pause the video, take a look at this, and you can also draw your own calendar like this to help you in whatever business you find yourself. Remember, always have your leader approve your calendar before you can start using it. That way your leader works with you or your sponsor works with you or your coach works with you and asks you question, have you done this? Have you done that? What are your plans? In order to push you to achieve success. Listen, cowards never start and the weak never finish. Winners never quit. Whatever action you take today, tomorrow, the day after, a year after would put you into one of these categories, one of these. So always have that at the back of your mind. Now you need to lose your excuses in order for you to find results. Excuses are like darkness to results, which is like light. Darkness and light they don't stay together. Excuses and results don't live together. More often than not, if you take a look at it, our business is built around most of the network marketing businesses. It's built around just you having two, just two persons in one day. And you know what? The last man can get the next man without the first man and business moves on let me show you how you know how you can get a prospect to see a video or a presentation most times in our system we have videos like this one that i'm sending to you now you could always send it to a new prospect i mean a new partner there are other videos that you would also find out you can send to a prospect in order to make him watch and see or even invite him to a presentation so Number one, when you want to invite someone to a presentation, be in a hurry. Do not make the person feel you have so much time to spend and so you want to answer all these questions. No, be in a hurry. You see, people tend to be more attracted to people who are busy or have a lot of things going on. It stimulates psychologically. Some in a hurry, you know, you know when you're in a hurry, you just prick them. You just make them, whoa, he, he doesn't have much time. He's like me. So let me just listen to him real quick. We have a couple of scripts, you know. First, if you're dealing with your warm market, your warm market, 
we're referring to the people you know, people that are your friends. You could just pick up the phone and say, hey, I don't have a lot of time to talk, but it was really important I reach you. I have a million things going on, but I'm glad I caught you. I'm running out of the door, you know, but listen, I need to talk to you real quick. You so say, when you use any of these lines, you can use the words, word for word. It, 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 it stimulates your, your, your prospect psychologically. But what if you're talking to someone you've never met before, your cold market? Okay, you could go this way. So now isn't the time to get into this and I have to go. But then you tell him what you want. You know, for instance, now isn't the time to get into this and I have to go. But if I found a way that we could make lots of money on the internet, I mean, via gold, cryptocurrency, would you like to know about it? Or you go on like, I have to run, but I've got this real quick to, to talk to you about. Step two, compliment the prospect. How do you do that? Find something you can compliment really sincere. Be sincere, okay? You must be sincere to open the door to real conversation. When you meet people, compliment them, okay? The compliment scripts that we have there, like, you've, you have always been so supportive of me and I appreciate that so much. It's a way, especially if it's your warm man. You want to tell the friend something, the first full of compliment him. It opens his mind. He wants to listen to you. He wants to know exactly what you have, you know? It's like, whoa, thank you so much. And then you go on. You could also use this line. I was thinking, who are the sharpest people I know? And then I thought of you. And imagine how that, what that's going to trigger in the person's mind. Oh, so you consider me a sharp person, right? Or you could also use this line. I admire the fact that you have an amazing mind for business. And I can see things other people, and you can see things other people don't see. But what if someone you've never met before, someone in your cold market, you just gave me one of the best service I ever received lately. Maybe in the bank, maybe somewhere. You know, oh, thank you. You're opening the door to tell the person your business, part of your business. Wow, you are super sharp, super intelligent. Who? can I ask you what you do for a living? You know, that's a way you also open the door and the person will be ready to listen to you. So step three, remember we're talking about how you can make an invitation, how you can invite people to see a video or maybe be part of your presentation. So step three, this is time to make the invitation. You've got to hold, you've got to be bold to get the ball rolling. At this stage, use either the indirect or super indirect script. Let me show some of the indirect scripts for your warm market. I once heard that the best thing I could do when starting a business is to have people that I respect take a look at it and give me some guidance. Would you be willing to do that for me if I invite you for the business presentation this Sunday? Now you're, you're passing authority over to the person. Say, look, I want to go into a business and I'd like you to take a look at it. You know, people like to be, <laughs> people like to be pampered. People like to, people like it when you make them feel sincerely that they're important. See this other script. Seeing the way the economy is going, I am thinking about starting a business I can run part-time, but I don't know if you're the right person to talk to about this business for advice. Meanwhile, what's going on with your job? Okay. So you're also telling the person you're coming from the back door, okay, to tell the person about your business. But let's say this super, super indirect script. I love this one. Okay. First, if it's, whether it's warm or cold market, you could use this. This business is clearly not for you, sir, but I wanted to ask, what do you know that would be ex that would be exciting? Who do you know that would be excited about the idea of adding more cash flow to their lives? 95% of the people you talk to would ask you, what is it about? You could also use this line. Do you know any sharp person who lives in maybe in Lagos, maybe in Keja? Yes. And the person, you know, yes, great. Could I get his name, his email, if you have it? I have a business that's expanding in that area, and I would want to see if they think, if they think it will be successful over there. 95% of the people you ask this question will ask you, tell me about the business. You see, most people will ask for more information because they will say, well, that makes sense. And then once they do that, you know, once they simply say, you know, I ask for more information, you simply say, well, that makes sense. And then jump to step four. What's step four? Immediately start the deal. You use this phrase, what if I, would you? 
if I if I do this, would you do that? If I do this, would you do that? Let's share this is some of the script. You're not going to offer your invitation or third party tool unless you agree to do something. The person agrees to do something in return. That is one of the top secrets of you know professionals in this home business or network marketing business. Some deal striking script examples are if I give you a video, a short video that simplified the business information, would you watch it? Or if I gave you a CD that describes the business, would you listen to it? If I gave you a link to an online presentation that explained everything, would you click on it and watch it? If I gave you an access, an access card to a strictly by invitation event for this business, would you come? Now, if you've done the first three steps properly, the answer will be yes. I can guarantee you that. So the phrase is, the phrase is if I, would you? If I, would you? So if you've done all of this, I mean, the doors will just swing open. If they ask for more information first, just respond with, I understand that you want more information, but all of what you're looking for is on the CD or the DVD or in the printed piece or link or event. The fastest way for you to really understand what I'm talking about will be to review that material or attend the event. So if I gave it to you, would you review it? Or if I gave you an invite, would you come? If they say no, they won't review it or they won't attend your event, then thank them for their time and move on. Also review steps one to three to see what you could have done better. Do not still give it to them. I repeat, when people say, nah, I'm not sure, don't give them your invitation card, don't give them the CD, don't send them the link, don't act like you're desperate, okay? Because you've got something better than what they have there. Step five, get it time and commitment. Just in case the person says, yes, I will be there. Don't stop there, don't just move on. This is what you do. When do you think you could watch the DVD for sure? Get a time commitment. What do you think you could listen? When do you think you could listen to the CD for sure? When do you think you could watch the link for sure? When is the best day to give you a reminder before the event? Don't suggest a time for them. Ask a question. Have them give you the time. It is not, if it's not definitive, go ahead. I'll try to do it sometime. Then tell them, I don't want to waste your time or mine. Why don't we just try to lock in a time? You have seen this, I mean, a time that you are sure you would have seen the beat CD, the DVD, you would have listened to the video. You know, get a time commitment. Don't leave without getting one. The key is to get them to say yes a second time. You know, saying yes to step four is not a commitment. They have to say yes to step five. People like to be respected. People want to be respected. People appreciate it when they are respected. So when they give you their word, they want to keep it. So make them give you their word. That is the key here. You know, I'm taking this slowly so that you get to understand, but that's not the end. Step six, you've got to confirm. So it's that simple. These are the scripts. If I tell you, if they tell you that they watch the DVD by Tuesday night, your response would be, so if I called you Wednesday morning, you would have seen it for sure, right? If you say they will listen to the CD by Thursday morning, your response would be so. If I call you sometime on Thursday, you would have listened to it for sure, right? If you say they will watch the link by July 1st, your response would be, so if I called you on July 2nd, you would have watched it for sure, right? If they say you should remind them a day or, you know, to the event, your response would be so. If I called you four hours to the event, would that be early enough? The key to step six is you want them to say three times yes that they would follow through and they've done it all by themselves. Now, they've set a real appointment with you for the future. Note, please put this appointment in a place you won't forget. So get them to say yes by themselves. Let them commit by themselves three times. That is what you're looking for. Don't leave it at that point. Step seven, take it away. Now it's time to go to the next prospect. Remember you're in a hurry, right? So it's time to get off the phone or get some other business or discussion. And the best thing to say at this time is great. We'll talk later. I got it wrong. Good. We have a deal. Meanwhile, you know, I got to run. Please and move on. Don't stay back. The longer you stay, you're giving the person time to ask you more questions. 
okay whether you're meeting in person live or over the telephone remember there are seven steps you go pam 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 you get a commitment the first time the second time the third time and that's step six and you move on hey yo you know what i've got a meeting i've got an appointment to catch and i've got to move i'm real in a hurry do not stay back the person will ask you more questions and that is not what you want so let's try an example you know quickly all right so the example here is um you know for instance you um to a good friend use the indirect approach so you use a prospect name and this is just a script you can use this is a prospect name contact info and step one you know you put in a hurry you, you have to be in a hurry for instance you say hey hey stallone i'm running out of the door i really need to talk to you real quick you've always been so supportive of me and i appreciate that so much seeing the way the economy is going i am thinking about starting a business i can run part-time but i don't know if you are the real the right person to talk to about this for advice if i give you an access card to you know if i give you an access card to strictly by invitation event to the business would you come and you know why do you think you could watch it you know if it's if it's if it's a business i mean uh, okay i think i skipped that i'm sorry about that okay so if i give you an access card to strictly by invitation event for the business would you come what is the best day to give you a reminder before the event so if i called you four hours to the event would that be early enough fantastic okay so you put down the time the number and great we'll talk later i got the run thanks man simple so i'm going to take that again hey still on what's up um this is um samuel and i'm running out of the door but i i need really to talk to you real quick you know you've always been so supportive of me and supportive of me and i appreciate that so much seeing the way the economy is going i'm thinking about starting a business i can run part-time but i know if you know i don't know if you are the right person to talk to about this advice. Uh, if I give you an access card to strictly by invitation event for the business, I want you to look at for me. Would you come? I said to me, the friend says yes. So, when is the best time to give you a reminder before the event? Ah, and the person gives you an answer. So, if I call you four hours to the event, would that be early enough? Okay, great, fantastic. Check the time number. Thank you so much, man. Ah, we'll talk later. I got to run. Thanks. Move on. So what if it's the indirect approach? So you say, you know, again, you're in a hurry. So you go this way, um, this is the indirect approach. Hi, Stallone, my name is Samuel. And um, now, it's, now isn't a good time to get into this and I have to go, but um, you know, you're super sharp and you know, and um, based upon the approach um, you've chosen, okay, I think I'm mixing this up right now. Uh, you know, let's see. Okay, you could go ahead and say you're super sharp, and I happen to be looking for some sharp people. Um, do you plan on doing what you're doing now for the rest of your career? No. Okay, good. I have something that might interest you. Well, now's not the time to get into it, but. Um, I have a DVD that explains it all in great detail. If I gave it to you, would you watch it? See, so the person says yes. Um, when do you think you could watch it for sure? So it tells you so. If I called you after that, you would have reviewed it for sure, right? All right, I'll check back with you then. Uh, what's the best number and time for me to call? Doesn't give you all of that. Okay, here it is. Thanks again for the excellent service, and I'll talk to you soon. You know, so these are all approaches. There are a couple of other approaches here you can also take a look at where he has to script over and over and over again until it gets into you. Okay. Knowing what to do, like we said earlier, is never, never enough. So you must do what you know. You can set up a 30 day challenge. You know, so most times we do this. Okay. You could put this first, you know have a list of uh, 50 prospects collect five new prospects or contacts every day make five calls every day initiate two three week calls every day you can do all of this put them together in perspective and set a 30 day it could be a 60 day goal for yourself 
and start following. Make sure you discuss with your coach or your sponsor so that you all of you can be on the same page and you start, excuse me, working on this. All right, that's the way you grow your business. Excuse me, I just had to take a glass of water. Um, that's the way you grow your business. Like I said, the first few days, it has to be back to back. Listen to this video, watch this video, take down notes again and again. Have a clear calendar for yourself. Discuss with your coach or your um, your success coach, your sponsor. Have a clear career plan or a business plan for yourself on how you can succeed. Okay, never let distractions distract you. Keep going. Yes, never stop because, listen, I just did it. Um, if you have any questions, you can talk to your your success coach or I'm going to drop my number beneath this um, and um, email address. You could always reach me and ask questions, but I'd suggest you talk to your success coach or your sponsor to help you through. Um, you can succeed. Lots of people have succeeded. I've done this. I've made this video just to help all of you that are coming into any of our businesses so that you can start off and you can succeed in no time. Give yourself 30 days to make a change. I know drastic, fantastic, dramatic change if you like. Thank you so much for watching and see you at the top.